42 weeks pregnant, so I might not be at the next is this, one. Is this a, a play for sympathy? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> you want to roll the dice? Um, yeah, yeah. She, she might be in the hospital in the next one, so let's, uh, let, let's go for it. Okay. Thank you. Very good. What's your feeling? You want to say your piece and then decide what to do? Yes, please. Okay. So we'll go in the order of the agenda, and uh, you folks are up first. Kate Krimmel, who is not here for reasons that may be obvious, and Mr. Schwartz. George, if you the uh, no, Mr. Willoughby is our secretary tonight. Now, by the way, you know you both have coverage and FAR, Richard. Yes. Okay. Because the first letter that went out did not make that clear. Try to televise these things, and that may, that may or may not. I thought they used it for sure. minutes. So. Yeah. Um, Douglas McClure for the paper on Trimble and Mitchell Street Forts at 29 Little Street. Um, my clients are looking to put on a 328 square foot Victorian uh, addition to the back of their house to. Uh, a new kitchen and a master bath, master bedroom and bath suite upstairs. Um, and because of that, we are over covered. Uh, the house is pretty existing, uh, unconforming on coverage, uh, but currently I put together a um, quick analysis based on uh, assumptions about the neighborhood. Okay. Sure. Thank you. The second page is sort of a key map to the different properties. Thank you. Um, a couple of things uh, are coverage increase from existing is only 10.4%. We are, there's an existing patio in the back that we're taking out, an existing side path that we want to be moving. Um, so we tried to balance out the coverage uh, as best as we could. Um, we are also in a unique situation. The attic has an existing stair that goes up to it, um, but the attic ceiling height is only five foot four. But that doesn't matter because we have an existing stair going up. We have to include 50% of our attic as FAR. Uh, if it had a um, hatch, uh, we wouldn't have to include any of it. Uh, it's not half of the space. So that kind of increases our FAR a little bit, which I call that break very much. How much? What's, what's the number that you're going to pay off? Um, it's that's 408 square feet. Uh, if you look at the chart for the neighborhood, a uh, little over half or about half of the properties uh, exceed FAR in ranges from 105% uh, to 168%. Um, so we are looking for a 14, 114%, uh, which is a 14% over allowable. Um, Similarly, on the coverage, the majority of the properties in this area also exceed coverage uh, by a similar range. The other unique uh, part of our property is while we do have neighbors to the north, um, which is 27? 23. Sorry, 23, Maple. Um, to the south, uh, it's, an, it's empty, it's actually school property, so we're not actually affecting uh, neighbors 
on that side. You said 23 Maple. You mean 23 Willow, right? Sorry, 23 Willow. Yes, 23 Willow. Okay. Um, and as you can see, they're actually 173.6% over on FAR. Um, the other uh, thing I would like to point out is from the front, uh, uh, well, you can't see because it's black and white, but the front, uh, where we actually have no effect with the building, and the back is at a uh, tall row of edges, so basically there's no effect uh, on the street. Okay, I mean, I went around, went to the house uh, Monday after I flew into town and there was nobody there. Uh, so I didn't get to meet anyone involved. Uh, but I did notice that in the back, sort of on the southeastern side, mm -hmm. there is a gap in, in the trees, if yes. you will. There's a pretty <coughs> good line of coverage around the back, except for this one. I don't know, four foot area. On the facing the school. Facing the school, sort of facing a little bit <coughs> diagonally away from the school, but in that general direction. You know where I mean? Yes. Um, it struck me without uh, predicting what would happen on the merits of this, that if this were to go through, you ought to include something in the shrubbery to close that gap. Well, Your client is not in head, so. We certainly can. Um, but that's something the planning board may or may not suggest too as we finish with them. What do you have left of them? Uh, we have to get approval from you. They had a list of some engineering issues which we've actually already addressed, uh, but they referred us to you so we could get our variances and then go back for our final public hearing. Yeah. And you're representing to us there are no substantive issues left with the planning board? No, the only issues they had were um, were some drainage issues. They can be substantive. They, well, they, they did not have the complete uh, engineering set of drawings at the time. I have since submitted them to um, the village engineer, and everything's pretty much okay. okay. Um, you mentioned that uh, I see the 168 percent on the FAR at. It's actually 14 willow. <laughs> 23 willow is 173, right? Yes, you see that. And that coverage, though, they're within the limits on coverage, right? At 23 willow, yeah. 23 willow is actually, uh, if you look at the key map, um, it's actually a wider lot. Um, it's, it's sort of, these are all just like, I don't know how they, the lots are little strips, so most of the lots are two <laughs> strips. Uh, 23 is three, so it has more area for coverage, um, which is always an interesting thing. If you have a bigger line, it's easier to get your coverage than wherever they are. I see what you're saying. The, the items that you're taking out to get your coverage, which I, which I calculate being 34% over. 34% over. So, well, it is, it's 34% over allowable, but it's only 10% uh, over existing. Okay, no, I don't, I don't <coughs> disagree with that, uh, but the way you get to the only 10% over existing is by, in part, by taking out uh, the walk and patio that go around right. the north side of the house, which are frankly pretty... Uh, De minimus? They're, they're de minimis and they're in the ground. True. So the bulk, yeah. the bulk is you know, obviously that you're proposing yes. is quite different. Yes. Than what you would be taking out, and they're also not very good repair. True. Frankly. But coverage counts as coverage in the village, so uh, I'll give you that. But you're even after the <coughs> removal of the the walk to the patio, you're still 34 percent over, right. which is not a small number. Right. Um, Another question I had, I can't tell on the proposed terrace, how how, how would that be constructed? It's at grade. 
So it's it's stone, it's a uh, blue stone and stone dust, and it's just a high grade patio. You're talking about the patio. The new patio. Well, they call it a terrace, and I was going to ask. I mean, that's well, here it says new flagstone patio. We're talking about the same thing. Yes. I'm looking at you on the first page. page. Yeah. Right. Okay. There's no difference. Yeah, it's the same thing. Okay. okay. So the terrace on page two is the same yeah. as the patio on page one. Yes. Okay. Doesn't mean it's raised anymore. No, it's not raised. Right. Um, when did the present owners buy the house? September. <coughs> I think that cuts someone against you. I mean, buying a house and then immediately seeking to expand it is not. Why should that cut against you? It's, I will tell you, we have the comprehensive plan work going on at Irvington. And I've been sitting through those things. And the number of times I have heard um, comments, negative comments, about more often about people building a house up to the maximum coverage and other figures, and then coming in a few months later seeking a pool or something additional. Um, that, I think it's fair to say, is not well received among the That's group. understandable. This is this is a little different, but it's not I mean, the house was purchased already over in coverage. Correct. And something to be adding on, you know, within a year after after the purchase, it seems to me, you know, whether whether or not the applicant family knew about the restrictions at the time, they have to be taken to it now. And of course, but in, in this neighborhood and as in the village, if you look at the context, the majority of the houses are in pre-existing non-conforming conditions. So it's, and it's not unusual for people to want to expand and ask for variances on that in, in the village. I think, in this area. I think there's something to what you say, but I, um, I will just tell you for your future reference and nothing else. So when you have clients who buy a house and then shortly want to expand it. That is generally not as well received. Understandable, but if the whole neighborhood has been notified and none of the neighborhood shows up, is that an issue? It may be an issue village-wide, but if it's not an issue neighborhood-wide, why should that affect people <laughs> in their neighborhood? Well, that's one of the things we have to be concerned about because one of the issues is, will this set a precedent for others in the neighborhood so they can do the same thing? I understand. And that, I mean, some of the houses... But hasn't that precedent already, already been set? For instance, their, neighbor, their direct neighbor to the north has... The house was not always as big as it is now. Um, across the street, down a few blocks, but many of the houses in that area have already set the precedent Expanded. Well, that's, I think that's true. Although I, I must say, going around, I didn't get the same impression of the neighborhood in terms of mass of houses and so forth. I mean, they're all, it's a very nice neighborhood. And um, a number of the houses are, they may, they may have been added on to after they were first built, <clears throat> but not many have um, the degree of mass, if I can put it that way, that this house would have after the proposed addition. It just doesn't have that impact visually of me going around. Where did you get these numbers, by the way? Um, there is a project in front of the planning board now that had a chart that I started with, and then I referred to the Greenberg uh, property zoning list and tried to extrapolate them from there. Obviously, a lot of it is guesswork on everyone's part. Um, I'm assuming most of the houses are 50% attic, but I can't know. Um, some of them may have full attics, some may have no attics. Um, well, similar for basements, I assume there was that most of the basements were underground, so I didn't count any of the basements. Um, and then I looked where I could. I had it. I knew I had had the drawings for our neighbors next door, so I was able to look at their um, exact requests from the when they came in front of the zoning board a few years ago. Um, so 
I spent as I could. I put them together. What's their attic situation? Do you remember? Uh, they don't. I think they have fifty percent attic. Uh, no, I'm sorry. I don't think they have an attic. Um, there's one other provision in the code that we always have to uh, ask you to address, and uh, that is we are required in considering a application for a variance to grant the variance that is least expansive. Mm -hmm. Can you address that? Well, uh, we, why this is that variance? If you look at the plan itself, we <laughs> have a bedroom suite is actually smaller than one of the bedrooms that's in the house now. We really tried to keep it as tight as possible and still make it a you know, a nice bedroom and a, a very minimal bathroom and closet. Um, similarly, the kitchen is not... Um, scale with the, the rest of the house, similar size rooms to the rest of the rooms that are currently existing in the house. What's, what's the number of the page you're looking at? The bottom right uh, corner? A1.1 and A1.2. But we really, the second floor is what really tried to rein that in as tight as possible and give us our footprint for the first floor. So you're looking at a bedroom that's uh, and that's in the addition that you proposed, right? Correct. The, there's a front room right now that their family is expanding. Um, <laughs> the front room right now on the north um, west corner, even though it's counts as an existing bedroom. It's, I'm sure you've seen this in other houses. Very, very small room, and it's fine for nursery, but for job grows, it's a little bit awkward, so this actually allows them to have uh, two decent rooms for their children. And on uh, A1.1 or 1.2, if you can, what, what the new construction will be? So the new the new addition is this shaded in Okay. There is some basic area inside the house, which we can In the Flagstone patio, where is there an entrance to that? From the dining room? No, from the kitchen. There's a door next between the refrigerator and the stairs. You step out onto a little path and move over to the right. And actually, this plan should have been changed. It still shows the path on this plan, but that's what's on the site plan is correct. We are not going to continue the plan, the, the path over that way. That'll just be like stone as you step out from the kitchen door, and then this little patio area over to the south side. One other question before I turn you over to the mercies of our colleagues here. On, on page SP2, Looking at the drawing of the attic, sort of in the, in the second column. Yes. There's a reference at the top. Cathedral ceiling doesn't it, does it exceed 12 feet in height. Yes. If you exceed 12 feet in height from the cathedral up, you double the area of the floor below. So you get a penalty for having a cathedral ceiling. <laughs> so we're sloping it down to keep the peak of that ceiling below 12 feet. Okay, it, it is not 12 feet, is what you're saying. Correct. And is it then a cathedral ceiling at all? Yes, because a typical ceiling will be eight feet. So we'll follow, the, we'll, we'll slope it up maybe another two or three feet just to get some height. I see. But there, it doesn't hit 12 feet at, at any point. Right? Okay. Other questions or comments? 
I, I think that the, between the coverage and the FAR, I think FAR is sort of the, the sticking point as far as I'm concerned. But, but having said that, I suppose you could deal with the coverage by cutting back the proposed terrace or the patio. Or the, or the patio. I'm, I'm not suggesting that as a condition necessarily, just making it as an, as an observation. I would, I understand the FAR seems large as a number. I think if you look at the volume of the house, it won't look, it won't look uh, out of scale with the house in the neighborhood. It's just a simple L. It has the same roof pitch. It, it has the same material. It will look like it has always been there. So I'm not sure how much of an actual effect and the fact that you have on the, on the neighborhood. Well, and if your drawing here is correct, it also doesn't go much beyond the house next door. Correct, which is something we were also trying to be conscious of. Yeah. Yeah. I noticed that from the, from the perspective outside the other day, too. Okay. I'm, I'm flustered by the fact that the two gentlemen on my left are silent. This almost never happens. <laughs> I think that this is a, uh, a reasonable addition to this lot. That almost never happens either. <laughs> okay. No other comments? Yes. Any questions? Hmm? Yes. We <laughs> forced it out of you. Um, anyone else want to be heard out there? Okay. Um, on condition that you do uh, fill in that gap in the shrubbery in the back, uh, I've got to say this one gave me a lot of consternation. I had to think about this one quite a bit, and I was trying to sort of perplexed at the silence of my colleagues because I wanted to hear what they had to say. <laughs> um, but my feeling is, although this is close, it's well thought out. Uh, you sort of uh, answered the questions that I had. And I, I must say I'm, I'm, I'm surprised, frankly, at the FAR numbers and the coverage numbers uh, at attributed to the other houses. I'm not saying you're wrong, it's, but, but it's a big, this is a big part of yeah. why I am yeah. sort of. It's interesting, this neighborhood, the, the three streets, the village itself, <coughs> and parts of East Irvington, um, a lot of the houses, I've done a lot of work on a lot of these houses, they don't appear as big as they appear when you break down the numbers. And I, I can't, some of that is, you know, we count attics in a big way, or the, the um, basement is three feet above grade. But I'm always surprised when I do FAR coverage of calculations that a house will be either closer to the, the limit or over the limit. It's, it's in these neighborhoods, they seem right because the context looks right. Okay, there. Did you run these by the building inspector? No. Or anyone in the village? No. I, I, I tried to make them up. Oh, I, I'm not. Even, <laughs> I'm not even suggesting that. Although, um, you know, when you when you tell us as you did very candidly that you have to make estimates and guesses about right. what people have in their attics, whether they have a stairs or something else. I mean, I. That obviously affects the decision. It would be a lovely thing if the village sometimes has a funding table of all this. I think would make it a lot easier for everyone. But like at sword with this, you could give it to them. Yeah. <laughs> I actually think Ferguson Malone probably has a better running table. Antitrust issues that you think you're saying? <laughs> Let me ask you to comment on this, and I'm asking this because the numbers you have on these sheets 
are pretty uh, influential, I think, in result. Um, would you have an objection? Would you be willing to take this document to Ed Merrim and to ask him not to you know, go through every number and vet them, but to give us an idea of whether or not, in general, this is a fair representation of what the FAR and coverage numbers are in this community? You mean delay the decision? Well, I would even think, um, even think of uh, assuming I would make a motion to approve the application and that was passed, I would make it a subject to condition. Yeah. You know, I wouldn't, and I'm not. Yeah. Um, so just, just a couple of um, points about the neighborhood in terms of precedence that this board has set over the past three years. I looked at, at the minutes just over the past three years, and there were, there were two houses that came before the board, one with far of 19.6 um, over and one with coverage of 35% over. Um, which, which two were those? Um, 23 Willow. And, and, and again, I, I think that that was at the, at the time <coughs> what they had been and been going over. And then 30 Station. Three station is under one coverage. Sorry, uh, on, on, on FIR. And which was the one that was over on? Uh, and 23 Willis under and are just right on coverage. Right. But, but substantially over on Yeah, FIR. substantially over on FAR. Um, sure. And you're, you're basing but, but your. Bottom line is, though, I, I mean, the, the, um, these numbers were actually uh, discussed at the last planning board for that other project <coughs> we took these numbers from Ed was there. Yeah. Um, and, and Ed was there, so I, I mean I, I don't have any sort of objection with you know, running by him. He's he, he saw it the other day. Okay. Um, I guess I guess what I would I would articulate it this way that I will make a motion to approve the application. Okay. Subject to the condition of Filling in, filling in the uh, shrubbery in the back, and also subject to a uh, overview of this document, which we did just receive today. Which, I understand. Yeah. Um, by and that other project might come up at the planning board, and I have not been able to use that as a, as a starting point to go look. I haven't had this. Yes. Yeah. So. No, I understand. Um, but subject to review by the uh, Metability Inspector for the <clears throat> general appropriateness of these statistics. Uh, and assuming that he, he does give that kind of consent, that kind of approval, uh, then he would be approved without further condition. But I would like him to see these numbers ahead of time. Okay, that would be my motion. Do I have a second? Second. We'll go up to the right, John. So, I just want to ask what what we expect to see from. Yeah, what what, what yeah, what same question. Okay, I mean, I I would expect. Uh, Ed's not a very formal guy. Yeah, you know, I, I agree with you that I, I I would like some kind of verification, but I'm not sure what. So, so if he if he. If I go in to talk calls to Ed me up tomorrow yeah. and he's in and say, Ed, you know, I, we put these together based on this, this, and this, um, will you take a look at them and, and tell Bruce if you think they're realistic or I'll, I'll accept, within range? I'll accept that either of those. Yeah. Okay. But what, what if he says, well, yeah, some of these are right, but, you know, this one really overstates the or understate, so I think if he does that, we've got to look at it. So, so if, if some I of these can ones are, tell you, well, let me just say this, it, it, I mean, we're, we're mostly concerned about the ones that are close by and over. Correct. And upon which we're basing our decision. So right. I would say that if any of those are, <clears throat> if he thinks any of those are significantly overstated, 
I want to know that. Correct. I will say that, so the, the chart that first set me thinking to do this had uh, the numbers for this house too low because I have just done all the calculations. Uh, and then, so I, that's where I started. Then I went to the ones that I could find that I knew about, specifically the one next door. It had them too low. So I think the assumptions that on the chart that I base this on were actually very conservative. Okay. okay. But I, I, I understand you would like yeah, please. Okay, I have a second, John. I, I'm sorry, I don't mean to drag this out, That's but fine. 23 Willow, I think, is, is key here. What what if he says? Oh no, that that's way you, that's way the the <coughs> is way high. It's more like 150 percent. I think we will have to wait and see what he says rather than deal with the hypotheticals. I mean, I I would say personally, if it's 150 instead of 173, and you're looking for 114. I'm not bothered by it. Right. Yes. Yes. But accepting your hypothetical is the real answer. So, so we think it is conceivable that he'll say it's not 173, it's 120? Yeah. That's, that's the question. That kind of a range. And some of the other numbers here, frankly, surprise me too, because uh, as I said, many, well, many of the houses are under 100% of either one or the other or both. I mean, 21 Oak is at 58 and 68%. That's. Those are people who respect the law. You know? <laughs> there are also, I think, if you look at that, the, the, uh, the streets down there, there are some houses that have, in the past uh, <coughs> eight years, had substantial work done to them, and there's some houses that are not turned over. Yeah. And I think that's where you see a lot of these. Right. I understand mm -hmm. the difference. Okay. Um, any other questions or comments on my motion as conditioned? All right. John? I'll vote yes. I'll vote yes. 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 Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. I'll be, uh, I've got to fly, yeah, I've got to fly to a Savannah first thing Friday morning, but I'll be back for the weekend, so Friday's the only day. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'll go in tomorrow. All right. Thank you both. Thank you. Good luck with other events. Thank <laughs> you. Oh, yes, thank you. So, the packet that we gave to you had a little bit of copies of this. Yes, yes, they were attached. Was it in color? Yes. Was it? I did not get that out. I don't think so either. Um, Tom always gets special considerations. Thank you. Yeah, they're attached to your letter, right? Yes, thanks. Oh, I have that. Thank you. I want to make a uh, preliminary remark that should not come as a surprise to you. Sure. I talked to your colleague Lino the yes. other day, um, and he was he was saying he couldn't be here because he had some pre-existing appointment, which seems to be the case for a lot of people tonight. Um, it seems very convenient. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, what I was raising with him was that the question because your your submission goes on at uh, exclusive length, not, not too much length, but exclusively to address the area variance issue. And I don't think you have an area variance issue. I think it's a use variance issue. You're not asking to expand perimeters to have other FAR numbers or anything of that sort. You're asking to have uh, residential property in the first floor in this district when the approved use is commercial. So I I myself see this as a, a use variance issue. We know uh, obviously did not send me a writing telling me what a brilliant thought that was, but he did say he understood my point and it might be it might be valid. I presume he told you that before you wandered in here today, right? Yes. Yeah, I'm okay. glad you said that because I thought maybe I was missing something. Okay. I should have perhaps circulated that thought. No, no, that's, that's anyway. fine. Our argument that it's an area of variance and not a use variance is that a uh, residential unit is a permitted use within the business district. However, the location of that use is restricted to the second floor or the floor above curb, curb level, and that really, since it is a permitted use, permitted use, we're seeking an area of variance to communicate.
going to do some of the first four. Whatever. So, but, you know, as I understand, I, I'm here tonight to, to gauge your board's thoughts on, on that application. Uh, if need be, um, we can adjourn and, and um, we come up with some more evidence of some sort. More information to use the experiments. Uh, one question, if we do do that, uh, we, we've noticed this public hearing for an area variance. Um, we were to submit an application for use variance, should we withdraw this application and, uh, and re-notice an application for use variance? Uh, I think probably the safer answer is yes. Or at least supplement it. Yeah. And say and or uh, one or the other, I guess. It's it's the the safest. Safest. I mean I'm not I'm not sure anyone looking at your notice would necessarily react differently because it was one rather than the other, but right. Um, yeah. Not much of it's yeah. to this. No, now, to now tell me what I mean you've got you've got nine and eleven together. That's right. Describe what 9 and 11 are, who was in there, you don't have to give us names, but... Sure. That's what I have it. with me tonight Mr. Frank Salvi, one of the proprietors of uh, the Family Corp. Good evening. Uh, he what might be Good better off uh, after well, one, one is empty for the last uh, almost a year now. I have three bedrooms, and it's empty. I'm in a market, you know, to rental, and it's empty. Nine states I've been trying for the last 10 years to rent as a commercial. But I have no phone call. I have nothing. Or I had a one kid who went to do karate, and then I was not. He was just a young kid, and I refused. You know, so I better be the empty. Don't have a headache. You know. So I mean, uh, for the last ten years, I don't know what to do with a property. You know, in other words, to get some rental. But, you know. But I have one tenant right now. You know, uh, which they. It's specific to. to Oh, the building number nine. Number nine. Where at the curb level it's currently empty. Empty. The one on top is empty. It's empty as well. There's an empty one. And then eleven. Eleven is rent. And it's living in the back of the property. Uh, it's just just as left and right. There's nine and eleven. And then is the the first floor downstairs. Yes. The office is on the stairs. Now do you gentlemen know have cards. I do. Thank you. Do you have a card? Uh, not, not Would you mind writing your client's name on the card, just for the record? May I ask a question, since I'm still oh. relatively new here? What What is the rationale for restricting the use of a retail space for a residence? I, I understand what the rule is, but what one expects things to go the other way, typically. I don't want to put retail in what is a residence and people don't like that. So what, what's the motivation for? Thank you very much. I don't know the original thinking, but the rule we'll would have. Right. Um, but having, in light of this application, of going up and down Main Street, uh, it seems to be uniformly the case that there's a commercial property on the first floor, a residential upstairs, or it's an entirely residential building, one family. I mean, there are so <laughs> exceptions. Uh, okay. I, I just I haven't come up from everything, but I, I took a walk down from 85 May to 9 May and back up. And I can't, and I didn't distinguish between full one family houses, but I just counted the number, what I believe to be, like, from, from the sidewalk level, to, to be residences on, on the curb level, and I counted 16. Um, I don't know how many of those uh, have always been residences on the curb level, uh, but it might behoove us to do a little research to see um, if any have been granted in um, recent years. I don't. I don't remember this issue coming up. I'll tell you that. I I know uh, at least on Main Street in in my time, which is is a few a few years. <coughs> I had the same reaction walking around, but I, it didn't occur to me to try to figure out whether they were single-family residences or not. But, but, but in that area, if you just kind of look at the area, I got a sense it's more residential than retail. As you get further down the hill, it yeah, becomes no, more I'm, residential. Yeah, sure. 16, 17, or 17, 19, I think those might be multi-family. Multi 
and across the street. Uh, no, on the same side as. Oh, the yeah, same. No, yeah. on the other side is it looked residential. Oh sure, yes, yeah, right across the street. Yeah, directly across. That, that's why I say if you kind of stand in the middle of the street, right in front of his house and look around, you you don't say this is a retail area. What's that residence doing there? It's it's, I, it's a residential I, area. I, I, retail. Your father's property is the rest is the right? That's on the yeah. corner of North Buck House. Yeah. That's the rest of the red line there. Right. <coughs> I still don't quite have the, the existing arrangement. There's 911 share a staircase, right? Going on. Okay. And 9 is on the west side and 11 is on the right. east side. And they are two separate rentable right. properties. Correct. Right. And nine at the moment is not rented, right. and eleven is. Right. And nine is not rented just just because there's nobody in there. You've tried to rent that. I tried to rent that. Ten years. Yeah. Even when nobody, I used to live in Sorriso. I still own the property there, and uh, and even then I was trying to rent the place. I had on some value as a computer. It was called the student learn. Student learn computer. It was given you know, like fifteen, sixty hundred dollars. I never raised it. I was happy. But what what you're proposing is a is a third residential space in in the nine and eleven complex. Is that right? Correct. Because it's downstairs is a is a bedroom. It's got a whole window. It's on a fourth floor. Oh, it's got a ten eight window. It has. It's just a level. And you don't you don't even know it's an apartment now. You can use like two bedroom apartment. Now, is that is this third residential space, potential residential space we're talking about? Does that go all the way under nine and eleven? Under the nine, and uh, yeah, a little bit under eleven too. What's under eleven, otherwise? Uh, yeah, under eleven, then yeah, it would be like uh, the furnace and uh, one bedroom. So the whole the whole place underneath could be from nine and eleven underneath. That's what you're proposing, Councillor, as a, as a third resident, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay, now there's at least one rule in here that requires for each residential space that there be one and a half parking spaces. So if you were to be succeed with this, you would need four and a half parking spaces. Where do you get that? I don't have a parking. I mean, nobody, nobody down there, we have a parking. I mean, a bike out street. You know, all those condos there, nobody has a park. Nobody. Is there a parking down there? The old, everybody's doing it defense, huh? <laughs> everybody, everybody. Even when I had the restaurant, it was a, it was a little tough time in that time, you know, to people parking down there. It's uh, that if I would stay there, I was doing the bar at park because it was, you know, for some custom, just, you know, bring the car, and then where'd it go? You go around in the post office and yet, and that's better. And we have a parking down below there, you know, but nobody has parking. Okay, so that the short answer is you're not going to be able to comply with that requirement. Not on that property now. Okay. Um, look, the the use variance uh, criteria that the board has got to uh, ask you to demonstrate are that you cannot realize a reasonable return provided the lack of return is substantial as demonstrated by competent financial evidence. Now, I'm not saying anything has been said that is inaccurate, but we don't have competent financial evidence here. I mean, one of the reasons that this property could be empty on the bottom floor, or maybe even upstairs, it is the amount of rent that is being asked. I mean, that's every time you talk to a, a business owner, <coughs> And they're they're closing up 99% of the time. They said rent just got too high. So I mean that's a possibility. And we we just don't have anything on the record here one way. No, or I other. completely understand. If we do adjourn and apply for the use variance, we would submit uh, the information you need to, to render a decision. And uh, the second criterion is that the hardship is unique and does not apply to a substantial portion of the district or neighborhood. I'm not sure that's true. Uh, and the requested use variance of granted will not alter the essential character of the neighborhood. And as always, the alleged hardship has not been self-created. Now, 
I think simply some of the area variance criteria are similar, but they're not the same. And uh, in particular, the financial component is more specifically stressed here than it is under the area variance. So um, it, it seems to me that these are things, and you may think you've addressed one or more of these, but you certainly haven't addressed all of them yet. And I, I just, I mean, if I had to vote tonight, I would have to vote no. Right. Just because we haven't had a showing like that. I, I understand that. We would like to adjourn so, so that we can submit more information. You might get three yeses. These are very ornery people. <laughs> Based on that, uh, well, I'm in particular, you're right to point to answer. <laughs> um, I'm scared to death of you, in fact. You're what? I'm scared to death of you. Oh, yeah. I've yeah. seen that, much evidence of that over the years. No, I think, I think that you you need a use variance is what I think. And you haven't laid out the case for use variance. So would, without voting, I would agree with the chairman. That's more than I usually get. So, um, so I, I mean, uh, you know, it's your application, and uh, I presume that there's not a eight months pregnant lady who needs to move in there right away or something like that. <laughs> You would have led with that if that were the case, right? Well, they, they may have to. They said prior and says it come true, right? <laughs> true. Um, any other comments or questions? I, I am going to propose to uh, recommend that we adjourn this. Um, I would re notice it. I know that's a little complication, a little expense, but it's well worth it. If anybody wanted to stop you from doing this, and there's nobody here, so that may not be a problem. But uh, if anybody did and it were noticed the wrong way, you're just exposed and there's no reason to run that risk. Okay. Thoughts, Tom? Uh, I agree, but I, in fact, I second. Okay. Take that as a motion. Yes. Any opposition? No. Okay. Let's do that. Thank you, John. And uh, August, you may see some of us. You may see many more of us. Who knows? Okay. Thank you both. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Nice. He emailed me yesterday. Yes. Uh, yeah, it could have been even worse. <laughs> so the, the use variance uh, criteria there. So it's stated clearly in the zoning. Yes. Mm -hmm. We can all take a look between now and August. I, I, I understand the, the, the language and the requirements. I just don't get the rationale. Yeah, I'll ask about that. Seems to me, what, why would anybody object to this becoming residential, except for the parking issue? But so I, like here's, that. here's what I can think of, because if you want to have a business district, you want to encourage more businesses, it brings more people to the business district. But I make that up. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I no, well, I think I think that's probably what's driving it. That 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 makes a certain amount of sense. Right. But that I don't know. So that, so I'm I, picturing I, like the building that we did deciding on. I don't know that one. <laughs> but, agree but was yeah. This, wasn't that a completely? There's no businesses on the first floor of that are there. No. No, but there weren't before either. That's been a residential property going back some time, and I think that's the case for most of these properties and there are there are other resident purely residential properties there are yeah I mean uh, right right in that area that I mean as I said you got a sense of more residential than well the, the, the comics right across the street I mean uh, from this property well up the street but yeah and I guess you have the brokerage right next to in one of those is that uh, it's in the Miller building the brokerage is just north just uh, east of Buckout, right? On the north side? Yes. Yes. No. yes. So that's, I mean, that's commercial. Yes. I think, I think there, my impression is there are more commercial than there are, uh, there are residential. But I mean, it's definitely a mix. No question about that. But I, I don't know, you know, if he actually did the count, I expect he's going to come back and have a map for us. I, I didn't do a count, and I, I, it wasn't precise. I'm just saying my impression was standing right there. If you go up Main Street, it's clearly retail. Right. But but standing right to, right there, I just I was surprised, frankly, how many residential, apparently apparent residences there were. Yeah, well, not those and, two and, blocks. And I, yeah. I, I, I think no. you're right about the rationale. I guess I just I, 
I suppose I have a philosophical problem with with the government saying to somebody, you have to do this for reasons unrelated to, to what you're doing, because we want to, you know, we want some benefit for people other than other than you. Right. Which which you can disagree with. I right. Uh, I mean, I guess you you set you set the, the groundwork for your village. Yeah. And then you build around it, yeah. and then you create. Otherwise, you wouldn't have a village. And then we, you might be bothered that we didn't have a village because everybody was building houses. I, I don't I don't know what I don't have a. I haven't fully developed this philosophy yet. So I'm not no, well, as you, know, as, you as you can tell, I have another. Totally, totally different <laughs> subject. 200 Mountain Road. I did not understand why it came off the agenda. It came off the agenda. Uh, here's what happened. I got I got all these papers in, and uh, I mean the history. I spent a good part of my time in Georgia reading all this stuff yeah. that have gone back 13 or 15 years. And I mean, there were so many conditions to this. Sort of, we, we had 11 in the Lou Lustenberger's opinion. And then when it came back, the planning board had added two, and we endorsed that. Uh, and, and the first issue, there was something in the application to us that said that we, the applicants, have, have already uh, undertaken a number of works to comply with the conditions that were laid out, and that means we don't need a new variance. They said, that's an issue. I, mean, I understand what they're saying. I don't know what the law is on that issue one way or the other. So I asked uh, Ed Marin to, uh, uh, he is actually the Sarah, Sarah in the village, Florida. I asked her mm -hmm. to be in touch with both sides, the village and the applicant, and to have something to us by the 13th on that issue. And in addition, uh, from the applicant why they thought that they had done enough, but the facts were to support the view that they had done enough so that they were in that position, and from the village that they had not done that, so that we could get some information about it. Uh, that led to, uh, I had a conversation with Ed Mayor, and he said, I don't know who's going to do this uh, for the village, who would you call the village attorney? And I did, <clears throat> and I said, you know, we just need something from you telling us what you believe the standards are. Then she talked to Ed, found out what had been done up there, and she was she was the one who wanted to send it to her in the first place. And, and she was then satisfied that they had done enough so that they were in compliance with that theory. Okay. That's why it got withdrawn. For me, the one I found uh, consistently to be the biggest issue, there, there are lots of environmental issues, but the installation of a sewer up there which would benefit that property and surrounding property seemed to be an enormous part of the overall benefit to the village that they saw. And I understood from Ed Marin that the reason this took 13 years was that 12 of the years were consumed getting the sewer easement and actually getting approval of the sewer from other authorities, really? like the county. And that has just been achieved. So I think they probably have a pretty good argument anyway as to why they have be glad that it was because you could have been here at <laughs> quite a late hour. Interesting. Chucky Payton's involved with that. And he also built 9 11 industry. Came in uh, originally said if you give me these variances on a 200 mile road, I could, I could sell it for 250000 And the bill of sale was attached to the papers. He sold it for three ninety five. So mm. good businessman. Oh yeah.